Will Devin Singletary finally rush for a thousand yards? Well, keep it locked right here, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why I think that's gonna happen. Now it's no surprise that the Bills offense struggled last year in the run game. But if you're not careful, you'll look at certain statistics that'll paint a certain picture without providing full context. A case in point, last year, when you look at the Buffalo Bills rushing statistics and rushing yards per game, the Bills actually finished sixth in the NFL, rushing for 131 yards per game. Just below the Tennessee Titans at five, the Cleveland Browns at four, the Ravens at three, the Colts at two, and the Philadelphia Eagles at one with 156 rushing yards per game. But then when you look at the total rushing yards last year, again, the Bills are right there in the top 10. As a matter of fact, they're just outside of the top five, sixth place again. Rushing last year, total rushing offense with 2,209 yards. Again, behind the same five that I just mentioned. So when you look at it just from a statistical standpoint, you would be almost led to believe that the Bills rushing game last year was pretty, pretty good, right? I mean, when you're sixth place in the league in yards per game, rushing yards per game, and then sixth place in total rushing yards, you would think that there's no issue with the run game at all. However, those of us who are Bills fans and follow this team closely, we know that picture is kind of muddy a little bit, right? Primarily because of this. When you look at a man by the name of Josh Allen, <laughs> He ran last year to the tune of 763 yards rushing last year. And then when you look at Motor Singletary, specifically, Devin Singletary last year rushed for 870 yards rushing. So just with him and Josh Allen alone, it would paint a certain picture right of the running game. But we know that wasn't the case. The offense struggled throughout the season um, when it came to rushing the football, running the football. But if you ask me now, you say, well, Rev, we know that the offense struggled in the run game last year despite being sixth place in the league and, and rushing yards per game and, 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 and total rushing yards. How is it that you can say that in 2022, Devin Singletary is going to rush for 1,000 yards? This is why. This is why. Last year, there were a lot of issues up front with the offensive line. There's no surprise, right? It's not a shock to those of us who, who follow the team. We know that the Bills struggled up front to pave ways, to pave paths for the running back, specifically Motor Singletary throughout the season, the, the, throughout the majority of the season. It wasn't until the tail end of the season when the, uh, the, the, the run game started to really uh, gain some traction. But let me read a few headlines throughout the season last year to kind of paint the picture of where the struggles lied <laughs> as it pertained to the Buffalo Bills rushing attack. Because we know last year there were, there were questions, right, about, well, is it the offensive line or is it the running backs? Is it the running backs or is it the offensive line? Is, is it Motor Singletary? Is it, is it Zach Moss or is it the O line? Where does the struggle lie, right? But let me read to you some, some headlines. Last year, September 22nd, 2021, this is coming from BillsWire.usatoday.com. Uh, it says, from PFF, it says, below surface, Bill's offensive line still struggled. Versus the Dolphins. November the 10th. From Buffalo News. A closer look at the blocking. Blitzing problems. For the Bills offense. 
Let's keep looking. November 13th, again, Buffalo News. Bill's mailbag. What has caused the offensive line regression? So just a few headlines throughout the season gives us an indication that there were some serious struggles up front with the offensive line. And there's no need for me to get too far in depth about it. We all know the struggles, right, up front. Because when you look at Devin Singletary's statistics throughout his his young NFL career, he has averaged he has averaged over four and a half yards per carry. And that's rushing behind an offensive line that's not the best in terms of run blocking. Okay. So don't let the stats from last year fool you, okay? Numbers can can paint a certain picture without giving full context. We know the struggles last year as it pertained to the run game. But as we enter into this season now, here's why I think the Buffalo Bills, specifically Devin Singletary, a.k.a. Motor Singletary, is primed to have a very good year and finally reached that 1K mark that we've all been wanting to see him to see him do. It's because of a man by the name of Aaron Cromer. Now, he's not going to get all the credit, but I'm going to give him quite a bit of the credit. Okay? Now, at the end of last year, um, you know, at the conclusion of, of the season, Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott made a concerted effort to make sure that Josh Allen was protected. Yes, it was good to see him rushing for over 700 yards, and that looks good on the stat sheet. But we don't want our, the face of the franchise to be put in that type of position where he is almost a lead back <laughs> in the offense. We don't want that to happen. We don't want him to, 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 to even get injured, right? Because we know there's a great risk of that. And so Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott made a concerted effort to make sure that they protected him. And there's different ways in which they can protect him. They can protect him up front with the offensive line, right? But then they can also protect him from himself through coaching. And so they added Aaron Cromer last year when the previous offensive line coach, Bobby Johnson, the OG, left to New York to be their offensive line coach um, with Brian Dable. And so Aaron Cromer is inserted into the coaching staff to be the new O-line coach. Buffalo Bills, he is no stranger to us because he used to coach, used to coach with the Bills back in 2015. And if you remember, In 2015, 2015 through 2016, the Buffalo Bills offense, specifically the run game, was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Let's take a look at some of the the stats that Aaron Cromer brings to the table. When he was with the Bills in 2015 and 2016, he led the offensive line that paved the way for the league's top rushing attack. And back-to-back seasons with the Bills as their O-line coach, the Bills led the NFL in rushing in 2015 with 152 yards per game. And again in 2016 with 164.4 yards per game. Let me bring some context to that. In 2015, the Bills rushed for 152 yards per game. Last year, the league-leading rushing offense in Philadelphia Eagles they rushed for 156 yards per game. You see that? In 2016 with the Bills, Aaron Cromer and the offense, the rushing offense, rushed for 164 yards per game. 164 yards per game, which if we, if we compare that to last year, would have led the league in rushing. Would have led the league in rushing. Aaron Cromer is no stranger to leading offenses 
in the run game. When he was with the Rams in 2017 through 2020, he was their run game coordinator and their offensive line coach and helped the Rams to an NFC Championship and Super Bowl appearance in 2019. He has a long resume, a long resume. Not only has he been coaching for, I think, nearly 20 years, but he has valuable experience, right? He has, he has plaques, right? He has things to show for his, for, for his, for his, uh, uh, for his experience is what I'm trying to say. So now when you add a guy like Aaron Cromer and the coaching that he brings to the table, that gives you hope. It gives you assurance that we finally um, have the right guy in, in place in the right position to lead this team going forward, specifically the offensive line. But that's not where Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott stopped. When you look at what they did in the offseason, did they make some additions? You bet your bottom dollar they did. <laughs> All right? What do they do? In free agency, they bring in Roger Saffold. Roger Saffold. Okay? Roger Saffold was coached under Aaron Cromer. So he understands his system. He understands his philosophy. But Roger Saffold, according to his former teammate in Taylor Lewan, said that Roger Saffold is the best running guard, uh, running, uh, run blocking guard that he's ever seen. One of the best run blocking guards that he has ever seen. And we know the pedigree that he has, and we know firsthand the type of uh, uh, mentality that he brings, right? Uh, and that's and really just that entire Tennessee Titans offense brings. Additionally, we brought in David Cressenberry to play right tackle, who used to play right tackle for the Titans as well. So we're bringing in two guys who come from a, a, a scheme and a philosophy in Tennessee to pound the rock. Now, I'm not saying that the Buffalo Bills are going to be this ground and pound team at all, but what I am saying is this. They are Aaron Cromer disciples. They are guys who Aaron Cromer is... They, they fit, right? They're, they're his disciples. They fit his mold. They fit his, 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 his philosophy, okay? Now, Kessenberry, Kessenberry is going to be a depth guy, right? He's not starting. At least he's not going to be starting in the, in the regular season. Um, at least I don't think he is, right? Uh, Spencer Brown um, is going to start at right tackle once he gets fully, fully healthy, right? But he provides quality depth, quality depth. So when you look at the offensive line across the board from left to right, you've got Deion Dawkins. Then you insert... Roger Saffold at the left guard position. Then you have center Mitch Morse, very underrated uh, center in the National Football League. He's been a very consistent player for us over the course of his tenure with the Buffalo Bills. Then you got right guard Ryan Bates, who he brought back into the fold, followed by Spencer Brown. So offensive line on paper is looking very good if these guys can get healthy. They fit Aaron Cromer's mold. They fit his philosophy. They fit his idea, his mentality. These guys in the run game are, 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 are menaces. They're menacing, right? These, these guys, they, they have the attitude that we're looking for. Now, when you look at Motor Singletary's stats last year, he had 188 rushing attempts for 870 yards last year, which is a very quiet, right? When you, when you consider uh, what the offensive line did last year and you look at just the offense in general, specifically the, the, the rushing game, the run game, it's hard to believe that Motor Singletary almost finished with 1,000 yards last year when you know that the struggles that they had. But he had a very quiet 870 yards rushing by himself on 188 attempts. On 188 attempts. So what am I saying? We saw an uptake last year in Motor's uh, carries and his attempts last year. When you look at game-by-game -game statistics last year, as the year progressed, we started to see Motor Singletary getting more and more carries, which is something that we've all wanted to see last year, right? We were wondering why there were some lulls in the season where Brian Dayball wasn't giving Motor the ball. We all know that running backs, they, they need to get in a groove, right? They need carries to get in a groove. I'm not saying that Motor Singletary need to have 25 to 30 carries a game, but what I am saying is that he definitely doesn't need to have 10 to 12 
All <laughs> right. There were some moments in the season last year where he was getting less than 10 attempts. When you look at uh, from the KC game uh, back in October, he had six rushing attempts. OK, followed by five against the Tennessee Titans, seven in, against against the Dolphins, six against the Jags when we lost that game. OK, seven again against the against the Jets, three against the Colts, 15 against the Saints and the Thanksgiving game. 10 against the Patriots, 4 against the Buccaneers. Like, though, how can you expect any running back to get in a groove? I understand there's a running back by a committee, but he is, he is, for the time being and has been, the lead back for the Buffalo Bills. He is that guy. So why are you giving him less than 10 yards, I mean less than 10 uh, rushing attempts per, per game? That is not going to bode well for him at all. But when we started to see an uptick, in his carries, you started to see an uptick in his production, especially when the offensive line finally got healthy. And we saw that last year against Carolina when he had 22 attempts, 86 yards, all right? And then against the, the Falcons, 23 attempts, 110 yards. And then 19 attempts for 88 yards against the Jets to close out the season. So what I'm saying is this. If Motor Singletary can get an uptick in his attempts, if he can possibly get close, I mean, if, if he can reach the 200 attempt mark, mark for the season, and this is now a 17 season uh, a game. Uh, this is now a 17 game season. I think that it is very possible for Motor Singletary to finally hit that 1,000 yard rushing mark for his career, which, in my opinion, will bode well for not just him as he seeks a payday, but it'll bode well for the entire offense and Josh Allen as he's not having to rely on himself to be the lead back in Buffalo. What do you think is going to happen? Till next time, baby. Grace and peace. God bless. And go big.